We've looked quite a bit at how to do HTTP requests in C Sharp, and so far we've been using the HTTP client, but there is a very popular library that allows us to do the same thing, and today we're going to get introduced to it. Let's take a look. Hello world, I'm Nick Proud, software engineer and big.net fan, and today we're going to look at an alternative way to do HTTP requests uh, outside of the HTTP client using a library called REST Sharp. Before we start, if you like this video and you find it useful, then please like and subscribe to this channel. It really does help. If you have any sort of insights into what we're doing or any ideas, then feel free to comment below. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get hold of the various packages we need. In this case, obviously REST Sharp, but I'm also gonna get Newtonsoft because we're gonna be using JSON for this. Uh, we're gonna be doing a post request using REST Sharp. So I wanna send a payload in JSON and Newtonsoft just makes it nice and easy to create that JSON object. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click our project, the demo console here. I'm gonna to go to manage NuGet packages and then I'm gonna search for the packages that I need. So the first one I wanna just grab is Newtonsoft. So we see this a lot in most of the projects that we do, um, especially for things like HTTP requests, because we're dealing with JSON, it's just nice and easy to use. So I'm gonna install that. And then I'm gonna search for REST Sharp. And so REST Sharp is a library which uh, kind of, it's, it's kind of a turnkey solution for um, REST and HTTP requests. So it's an alternative to the .NET HTTP client object that we can use for lots of different things to do with communicating with REST APIs. Uh, and it also has really handy tools for authentication, serialization, and things like that. So in fact, we don't technically need Newtonsoft because we could use some of the built-in serialization features. But for this video, I just want to do a very simple demonstration of how we build a request and send a post request up to a, a, a remote API using REST Sharp. So I'm going to install that. It doesn't take too long to install at all. And then once that's done, I'm going to head over to our main class and we're going to get coding. So the first thing I want to do is I want to initialize uh, an instance of a REST Sharp client. So this is very simple and it's kind of similar to the HTTP client implementation. Uh, we just create a variable which is a new REST client. Um, and as you can see, one of the things I've missed is implementing uh, is using the REST Sharp library. So I'm going to just say using REST Sharp um, and then I can say new REST client. And one of the things you can do when you create this client is you can put in a base URL. So I'm going to head over to uh, JSON Placeholder. So we've used this in previous videos. Uh, and this is a really good tool for testing out API calls. Uh, it's just a, a fake API that we can use to fetch different things. Uh, and uh, one of those things being a post object. Uh, so it's almost like it's an API for blog posts. Uh, or photo albums, things like that, um, where you can just test out your API calls. So I'm gonna build out the request using this base URL, and then I'm gonna put forward slash posts at the end of it because that's the endpoint that I want to hit. So we just put a string in here, and then forward slash posts. So this would be the API URL that you want to communicate with. And then we've got a client all set up and ready to go. So then I need to build a payload because I want to post to this. So as part of this API, and it would be very similar for whichever API that you're sending to, uh, you need to send a payload if you're posting. So for example, if I go to this post send point, you can see this is a sample of the get request that the, the response from a get request on this endpoint. And so uh, I ideally want to send a new one of these up uh, so a new post object, and then I would get back an ID for that object. So I'm going to need to send a user ID. I'm going to need to send an ID. In fact, no, I don't think I do need to send an ID. That's auto-generated. So I'm just going to send a title and a body for this for this exercise. So I'm going to be creating a new post, uh, and I'm going to be sending JSON in, which contains a title and a body. So let's do that then. Let's set up our payload. So I'm going to create 
a variable called payload, and I'm going to create a new J object. So a J object is a JSON object, and for that I'm going to need the Newtonsoft library that I added. So Newtonsoft there. And I think it might be Newtonsoft.link. Let's just check that. Yes, it is. So it's the link namespace. So we're going to create a new J object, and then on that I'm just going to add my JSON properties. So I'm going to say payload.add, and I think one of them was title, so we can put the, the name of the property and the actual value. Uh, so I can just say some cool post title. Uh, and I think there was something else as well, let me just check. Uh, body, yeah, so if I wanted to put the body in there, I'd do the same thing again. Just changing the property name, so add body, and then some cool body content. There we go. So there's our payload, and now we've got a JSON object that we can send up to that API using our REST client instance. So to do this, we simply say, um, we want to get the result equals client dot post async. So this is very similar to HTTP client, um, and we need to add a request object. So that's something we need to build first. So let's build our request. So we've got a JSON payload. We actually need to build a REST client request object. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new object called request. And that's going to be a new rest request. And then this is the object that we can add our payload data to. Now, we've used Newtonsoft JSON uh, for this video. Uh, and the REST client, or REST Sharp actually, has its own serializer built in. I'll do another video on that coming up soon to show you how to use the built-in serializer. But for this use case, where we want to use Newtonsoft, um, you uh, need to add your JSON payload. Now the confusing bit uh, that you need to be careful of is that on the request there's a handy method called add JSON body, which you would think is where you want to, want to put your uh, J object or your Newtonsoft JSON object. Uh, this is not the case when using Newtonsoft. What you actually want to do is add the Newtonsoft object as a string. Uh, so what we want to do instead is say request.add string body. So if you look at the REST Sharp documentation, it shows you that if you use add JSON body using Newtonsoft uh, with an, a J object, it doesn't implicitly pass it, so it will fail and it will send through blank content. What you need to do instead, if you're using a J object like we're using in this video, is use add string body and then you need to turn your J object, jet, your J object into a string. So this would be payload, which is the J object we created dot to string and then the other uh, parameter that it takes is a data format so you have to tell the request the format of the data so actually this sets the content type of the payload whereas if you're using the built-in serialization which I'll show you in the next video um, it automatically sets the content type for you so we're going to do it manually here using data format and then it's dot JSON because that's the data format that we're using. So there we've added a string version of our J object to the body of our request. And so now when we do our post async, uh, so I've added in an object here which is the result of post async. Post async obviously being asynchronous, so we don't want to, in this um, console application, we don't want it to run asynchronously, we want to block execution until it's finished by using dot result. So that should give us the actual response uh, for the post request. So if I just run this and step through the code, so first we're going to create our J object. So we've got payload here showing the two properties we added, title and body. Then we create our rest request, which is just a blank rest request object. We use add string body to add the J object we just created as a string using data format.json. And then that's our request ready to go. We do the post and the result has come back with a status code of created, which is expected for this API. And if we look at the content that we send, you can see here that it's got the data that we passed with 
the J object. So that's just the key thing when using Newtonsoft JSON um, it, with REST client or with REST sharp that you can still build these J objects and it's still worth doing because they're nice and easy to use using a J object. But instead of using add JSON body, you use add string body with a string version of your J object and then just explicitly stating what the data format is and you'll be good to go. So there we go guys, a really simple implementation of REST Sharp. I will do more videos on this uh, because there are so many other features included in REST Sharp that we need to explore. But this is just basically a way to demonstrate how to do a very simple request uh, using some JSON. Obviously if you wanted to do a GET request, then you would just change the method from post async to get async. And there are lots of other methods uh, similar to that add JSON body, like add query string, for example. So have a play around with uh, the same code, but using a get request, you'll find that it's very similar. If you found this useful, then please like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. And I'd really like to hear from you. Are you using REST Sharp in your current projects at work or in your free time? Uh, are there any specific areas of REST Sharp that you find useful or not so useful? drop a comment uh, in the page below and I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, keep coding.